Hi, this is Tofrik, Principal Artist at Machine Games. In this video I'll show you how I textured this sci-fi environment using DDO Painter and how I set it up in Unreal Engine 4. I start by locating my mesh and my source textures. and Make sure they are set up correctly, uh, flipping the normal in the right direction. I don't have a curvature map so I'm gonna bake that in 3 do and just create my material. So I'm going to start by just finding a suitable lighting for my mesh while, while I work. So I'm just going to use the Unreal Light Probe, something like that. And uh, then I'm going to start by applying a smart material. And I want to be, it's a pretty dirty material, so I'm going to pick this uh, oily painted metal. I use that as a base for my mesh. It's a uh, yellow, but uh, I want it to be white. Uh, so I'm just gonna change the color and uh, then just go back. Now I want to create a second material. So I'm gonna use the mask color picker and just apply another material. So. For this one, I want uh, a darker painted metal, so I'm going to use this scratched painted painted metal smart material and apply that. For this material, I used um, the color ID to mask it. For the first material, I didn't, and there's a reason why I did not use that the color uh, color picker for the first material, which we will get to later. So now we go back up one more level and apply another material. This time I want to have a more shiny material, so I'm just going to use uh, the steel preset for the more exposed metal parts. And that's the base of the material that I'll be using. Now I'm going to go in and edit the rust a bit because it's a bit too heavy for this mesh. So I'm going to pick a better Dynamask and I'm going to go with uh, some light edge scratches. Suits this mesh a bit better, uh, but they're still a bit too uniform. They are very centered along the edges. So I'm going to pick a good brush and just start working away some of the more uniform look uh, along the edges. Just go over that, you know, over the entire mesh and just start evening those out a bit, uh, removing some of the more obvious uh, lines. Just going in and adding some rust back in here and there, just, you know, in, in the corners, some bigger uh, splotches of uh, rust. Just, you know, also get away from this uh, more obvious uh, curvature-based uh, masking. So I'm just going to go over some of the more logical places where the crevices and edges where rust would gather and just go in and add add some back and then remove some from the more larger edges. It's a pretty gritty environment, uh, not like a to totally abandoned one, but still it needs to have some uh, wear and tear and so I want to go in and make sure that also, you know, the corners and the back parts of the mesh have quite a quite a lot of rust buildup. Uh, make sure all the crevices and so on are covered. That's enough rust, so after this we'll go on to the next layer. which is the uh, motor oil layer. Uh, there the base is uh, relatively fine, but it still has some uh, patterns um, that are a bit too obviously repeating uh, over the where I've mirrored it. So I'm just going to go in and remove some of those patterns a bit, as well as cleaning up some of the more flat areas, because I don't want to have too much dirt build up. Uh, and like on the flat areas, I'm just going to go in and add some more softer stains along 
the edges and use this dirt to highlight some of the shapes a bit more. So I'm just going to go in and bring in some more depth into the sides of the machine as well as you know highlighting some of the curvature and the more curvy shapes that I have. So once again just deleting some of the more obviously repeating patterns and going in and trying to trying to get in some uh, unique stuff in the areas that are not mirrored and then trying to get some subtle gradients in the way I add the dirt along the softer shapes uh, trying to make sure not to have too much opacity on the brush just to make sure that I get you know, that soft look without it being too obvious or looking like it's paint strokes. So just going in and adding it uh, in layers. In general, just trying to jo uh, work in a little bit more history into the piece. Um, trying to gather dirt in some logical places and just highlighting some of the larger shapes as well as you know you know just cleaning it up a bit because I'm gonna use this uh, for masking later and I don't want to introduce too much noise into the masking because it might be hard to make it work so I'm just gonna clean up some more flatter areas and just give it give them a bit uh, more rest for the eye there so. so the last layer I will be adding is a sand layer which I will put be putting on top of everything just to make sure everything blends together a bit more and just to add a bit more dirt to the scene. So I'm just going to make sure that it tiles a bit harder and that the normal is not so strong so it doesn't look uh, too noisy when I start to blend it in with the rest of the textures. So I'm just going to pull that down a bit and then I'm going to add a Dynamask and I'm going to use a Sand preset and because that works rather well and gives me that uniform soft look and it's gonna go in and increase the tightness and blur it up a little bit so I'm just gonna go in and uh, start cleaning up some of the seams that uh, appeared when I blurred it and in general just clean up some of the areas that were not balanced in the ambient occlusion uh, texture these uh, ambient occlusion textures were not really baked out to be you know fully functional uh, like this because they are a bit too dark yeah. so I have to go in and clean up the back areas because they are completely covered and just you know going in and touching it up and making sure that the dust is mainly in the corners and using this as a, another tool just to enhance the shapes of the piece a bit and just going in and cleaning up completely in some areas or you know more or less completely just getting rid of most of the dirt some of it will be left but I just don't want entire areas covered in dirt and you know just covering up all the texture work that is under it so it's going to go in and clean up here and there trying to get rid of this uniform I mean the occlusion look and just you know, doing some touch-ups making sure it doesn't look so uniform and gradient based and just introducing a bit more brush stroke here and there as well as cleaning up you know, smaller pieces and you know the bottom of the piece here for example So the last thing that I will do is that I will select all the different uh, masks and I will export them out, both in the like top layer and inside the oily painted metal. I will select all the different masks like this and just export them out. And then I'm going to combine them into one mask that I will be using to mask uh, in the shader in Unreal. So I'm just going to grab all these layers, uh, the different uh, masks and just combine them by inverting them and multiplying them together and this is uh, because I want to control some things in the shader in Unreal and this is a good way to just get all the different masks out and I just want to combine all of them together and just mask out the different materials that are not the main painted metal and also all the dirt so I don't uh, color the dirt so 
This is what the mask looks like. I will now use the same method on the different assets for my scene. I'll just quickly find all the source textures, create a material, apply the same smart materials that I used on the other meshes. So the white paint base and the black uh, painted metal as well as the steel. And I'll use more or less the same masks and on the different assets. There's some changes depending on how they uh, look and what works for each asset, but in general I do the exact same thing. For example, here on the floor, I am creating, you know, now I'm creating the mask for the amethyst occlusion, um, the, the dirt. And I have some problems with the extreme triangulation that causes some artifacts, for example, uh, that I will have to remove. Also, the I'm using another rust mask because this uh, on this mesh uh, it works better with these larger splotches of rust, so I don't have to go in and do that very fine uh, scratched uh, rust that I had on, for example, the wall. In general, I'm doing the same kind of cleanup that I did on the wall. I'm just cleaning up things like the artifacts are causing too much tiling issues, as well as the too extreme um, dirt layering that is caused by my amid occlusion textures being too uh, large in scale of uh, the amid occlusion. And so I'm just going in and correcting some of those things, like the tiling seams as well as the more you know obvious lines of dirt and stains just going in and adding some more uh, dirt here and there enhancing the shapes a bit as well as just cleaning up some of the artifacts that i have but in general the base texture works really well with just some minimal cleanup here and there for a quick piece like this and uh, I was ready to go into Unreal. So here we have the finished scene in Unreal. I uh, wanted to expose some uh, things in the shader, which was what I would use the this mask that I exported out for. So what I used it for is that I wanted to be able to control uh, the color of the shader as well as the height of this split here using the shader. So what I've done is that I masked out the white paint from the albedo texture and uh, done that in the shader. So I did something like this where I just have two different colors uh, and a lerp and I use the uh, absolute world position um, and then I just add a parameter to that. And, and then I just lerp using the mask that I created. So, for example, if we would change the position now, here, we can move the split however I want, as well as recoloring the scene in real time. like this and I imported both the masks uh, so this is the mask here uh, and the albedo and the roughness textures uh, as linear textures uh, this way I got the general look that I wanted and the best representation of what I had in the Quixel suit. Quixel suite allowed me to texture the scene fast and efficiently, while still giving me time to breathe uniqueness into the textures and maintain control over my masks and shaders.